Honestly, I thought I knew everything there was to know about money, how to make it, how to invest it. I thought I was smart with my money. And then I read these three books that totally changed my entire life, my whole world, and opened up financial freedom and passive income into my life. I'm going to share them with you today. So my parents are entrepreneurs just like me, or rather, I'm an entrepreneur just like them. And so I was raised with the mindset of being your own boss, rather than the mindset of entitlement mentality, feeling like everything is owed to me. I was raised to believe that if I wanted something, I had to work hard for it and go after it. I honestly learned so much from my parents, I couldn't have asked for better parents. Hi, I'm Amanda Vander Gulick from cleverdo.com, where I help entrepreneurs just like you learn how to be even smarter with your money and how to grow a successful business online, plus how to raise money smart kids. So if you're interested in a good financial future and kids who don't grow up with an entitlement mentality, then make sure you hit subscribe and click that notification bell so that you're going to know the minute my next videos come out to help you do just that. So today I'm going to share with you the three financial education books that completely changed my world. So as a kid, I grew up in a rented house and that was actually on purpose. You see, my, ch my parents had immigrated from Holland and they moved to Canada from the Netherlands with a whopping $100 in their pocket. So yeah, not a lot of money, not even for back then. First, they moved to British Columbia and my dad was working with my uncle, but being an independent soul, he wanted to start his own business. So he came to Ontario and started his own woodworking shop. He eventually did really well with his businesses, but growing up, we were relatively poor. We didn't have a lot of money for extras. There was always food on the table and clothes to wear, but other than the necessities, we didn't have a lot of extra spending money. So we grew up rather frugal, although that could be because of my Dutch heritage. We're kind of known for bargaining and getting good deals. So, you know, there's that. Anyway, as we grew up into our teens, we started enjoying a few more luxuries as my parents' businesses grew and started to do much better. We went from powdered milk to real milk. We went from peanut butter sandwiches to ham and cheese sandwiches with mayonnaise. We went from mostly secondhand clothes to occasionally some fun new clothes and so on. But it did teach me to really appreciate things and I admit it, I still love a good bargain and I'd rather buy secondhand clothes than new clothes because it just feels like I'm helping the environment more. Plus, again, I love a good bargain. It's just what I'm used to and I was kind of proud of that. I know I have an inner pride of being really good with my money and making the most of every dollar. So it kind of affected my abundance mentality. I grew up kind of in a scarcity mentality thinking that funds were limited, opportunities were limited. and Although I had a huge appreciation of pride of ownership, of creating something for myself and earning my own money, I always had that feeling of scarcity, of not having enough, of just getting by, and that at any moment our property could be sold up from under us. So not having that feeling of, of financial stability. But honestly, those skills of being thrifty and being really good with our money, with what little we had, have helped me a lot, especially when a couple of years back, I ended up in a coma due to pneumonia, very similar to what we're dealing with right now with the coronavirus. I was put on a ventilator with very small chance of surviving. Luckily I did, but coming out of that and now being a person with a lung disability, it limited my ability to work and earn money. And it was the first time in my life where I wasn't in control of what I was earning and it terrified me. If you're interested in more about my coma experience and what it was like to be in a coma for three weeks, I talk about my near-death experience, my three-week coma in the video over there. But one thing I was really grateful for is that I came across these three books before I got sick quite a few years ago, and they taught me some money ideas, money values that I hadn't considered before, and they really changed my life, and they gave me the ability to still create an income for myself, even though I had a severe and have 
a severe physical disability that would otherwise hold me back. So although I grew up with entrepreneurial parents who really taught me to be my own boss and to be in control of my own financial future, I didn't learn how to leverage myself, how to be able to earn money without actually physically having to work. I, I grew up with that mentality that you have to work hard to earn money. And so when I was no longer able to work hard, I had to find other ways to still make money. And then I learned about creating passive income and leveraging myself. All right, before I share the books with you, because I really want you to get an idea of where I came from. So my dad had his woodworking shop, and then my mom opened up the Suntan Salon with my dad in my teenage years. And so I saw them working really hard. And although they were their own business owners, I kind of noticed that they were also owners of their own jobs rather than owners of leveraging themselves. Now they did do a lot of network marketing with companies like Amway and ACN and um, Radiant Life and all these different network marketing companies while I was growing up. And so I was able to see how you could start to leverage yourself out by helping other people start their own businesses and getting a small commission off of that. But I noticed that if they didn't work the system, then the people that they would take on board to teach, they would also not work the system. So it still was dependent on how much effort my parents put into it. And then I tried my own network marketing businesses and I found the same thing, that if I didn't put the effort in, it didn't grow. And like with my dad's work woodworking shop, if he didn't make cabinets, he didn't get paid. So although he could set his own hours and he could find his own clients and be in control of how much work he did, he couldn't just stop working and still get paid. Now they did invest in rental properties and that was very eye-opening because then I learned how other people could rent a house, pay my parents rental income, and then they'd pay off whatever mortgage payments and, and taxes and have a bit of money left over for themselves. And that's really exciting. And that's, I think, the first time I really started to understand the concept of passive income without knowing what it was called. And, but I found it really exciting. So I always wanted to own my own houses and rent them out as well. But I did notice that if in the middle of the night, the renter's toilet would break down or the roof would cave in um, during a storm or something, my dad had to physically go and fix those things. So... It was passive income, but it still required a decent amount of effort. My dad couldn't just stop paying attention to it, if you understand what I mean. And then I read the first book that completely changed my perspective on financial education or being in charge of my own finances. And that book was Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. This book completely changed the way that I looked at being a business owner. It never really dawned on me that I needed to build a business that could take care of itself. I guess I kind of prided myself on the idea of being an owner and being in charge of everything, but not realizing that that also meant I had to physically always be healthy enough and strong enough to do that. So this book completely changed the way I looked at investing in my own future. In Robert's book, I learned again about real estate and how wonderful it is, not the flipping of real estate, so not buying a house and then making it worth more and selling it, because again, that's for a one-time fee that you're working for, but going back to renting out a house, but hiring someone to take care of the tenants and take care of the property maintenance. So my old brain would be like, but then I'm paying somebody else where I could be having that money, which is true. But as I learned from Robert, and it really opened my eyes to the possibilities, by paying somebody else to do those things, to find the tenants, to make sure the payments came in, to take care of the leaky roof and the broken toilets, to take care of all of that, it freed up my time, which meant I could invest in more houses. Honestly, at one time, it was so exciting. My ex-husband and I, we actually had seven properties. I could have never done that if I had to take care of each one individually. And that was before I got sick. See, in this book, Robert describes 
how he grew up with two different dads, one who he calls his poor dad and one that he calls his rich dad. And ironically, in the beginning, his poor dad was the dad that made more money and his rich dad actually made less money. But his poor dad knew that Robert really had a desire to learn about how to make money work hard for you. And he knew that he wasn't the one to teach it because he was a person who had a job and therefore, as much as he loved his job and it paid him well, he knew that his job could be taken from him at any time. So he probably wasn't the best role model for his son for what his son wanted to learn. But his best friend's dad had figured things out. And so his dad had told him, go and learn from him. I realize he's not earning as much as me right now, but he's doing some pretty amazing things. I think you need to learn from him. And so that's what you learn in this book. It's the lessons he learned from his best friend's father that he calls his rich dad. And, and those lessons have honestly changed my life and gave me the ability to not fall into a deep depression after my own um, near death experience to know that even though I am limited with what I can physically accomplish and work on, I can just focus on building businesses, building things that are going to create recurring passive income. So monthly income that comes in regardless of whether I continue to work on it or not. So I'm not talking about easy, fast money. I'm talking about putting effort in, but putting effort in one time to then all you have to do is oversee rather than hands on. And so everything that I create, like this YouTube video, everything I create, I do it one time with the intention that it will provide for my family month after month after month. And that's the kind of thing I like to teach you in this channel because I want this for you. The second book that really changed my life was a book by George S. Klassen called The Richest Man in Babylon. It's actually the cutest story about this gentleman who's learning how to take control of his life and get out of the daily grind and instead of feeling stuck in life, finding a way to have a more abundant life. It's written in an old style writing, but it's a really, I really loved reading this. I This is the kind of book you can read to your children, to your teenagers, and they feel like they're part of the story. And the concepts that I learned in this book, the main concept that I learned in this book was about paying yourself first. And it was actually the inspiration for my for my money jars, my six magical piggy bank system that you can find on my channel here as well. And it taught me how when you earn your money, you need to pay yourself first. You put aside 10% to pay yourself first. It doesn't have to be exactly 10%. The point is something consistent that you pay yourself first. And since reading that book, I actually created my six magical piggy banks system, which you can actually see in this video over here, where I share with you my jars, like my rain jar and my gold jar and learning how to take your, yourself as a priority. When you're earning your money, instead of paying your bills first, paying yourself first, then paying your bills. And I know that can seem kind of scary, like, but I have to pay my bills. I'm not telling you to not pay your bills, but instead of paying your bills first and then paying for all these other things that you think you need to pay for, and then seeing if there's anything left over at the end of the month for yourself, you're always gonna come up empty. You're not gonna have enough. So by putting a mindset of paying yourself first, that's going to totally change your world. So I highly recommend you read this book. I'm going to put links to all of these books in the description below for you. These are books that have totally changed my life and changed the lives of thousands of people around the world. Hundreds of thousands, probably millions of people around the world. And the last book I want to share with you today is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And the reason I love it so much is Napoleon wanted to understand how to have an abundant life, how to live a life of prosperity and happiness. But he knew that he didn't know how to do that. And so instead of just trying to fumble his way through, he decided 
to go and interview the most successful people in his time and to put all those interviews, all the lessons he learned from those amazingly prosperous people, abundant lifestyles into a book. And so Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill is his collection of the lessons he learned from these very abundant and prosperous people. And the reason I'm really excited to share it with you is not only are the lessons invaluable, and most people actually only ever focus on those lessons, which is great, but there's another lesson behind that lesson that I really want you to pay attention to. And that is that if you're thinking of starting an online business for yourself, especially right now when we can't go out and just do regular jobs because we're literally being asked to stay home and to keep everybody safe. So you might be thinking of starting an online business. And I bet there's a part of you that says, but I'm not an expert. What could I possibly share or teach with other people? To, to find a way to create an online business that's going to help others or help my customers when I'm not the expert. Am I right? And the wonderful thing about Think and Grow Rich is that by showing us that Napoleon Hill wasn't the guru, he wasn't the person with the experience, yet his book was has been a bestseller for years and decades, right? And the reason is, he leveraged himself. So instead of his own knowledge, he sourced the knowledge of other people who are experts, who are gurus. And that's what I want you to get out of that book is that you don't have to be the expert. You just need to be one step ahead of the people that you are helping. And you can actually pull sources of re resources and experiences lessons from people who have gotten to where you're striving to get to, to help the people who are behind you, as well as helping yourself along the progress. I remember once hearing this phrase and it was the best teachers are learners. You learn best by teaching because when you, when you want to teach something, you really have to think about what the lesson is and understand it really well and learn and grow yourself in order to teach it. So if you want to learn something, just learn how to teach it and you will learn it. It's amazing. Anyway, I'm really excited. I want you to go check these books out. So Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And if you have children, he's got a book. It's a comic book that he created called Escape the Rat Race which is a fabulous book to teach the lessons from Rich Dad, Poor Dad to your kids in a really fun way. And like I said, George S. Klassen's book, The Richest Man in Babylon, is actually a brilliant story that you can just read together with your children and they're going to get the lessons. It's amazing. And then as far as Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, it's a little bit more adult language, not in a bad way, but just in a conceptual way. And so read those ones for yourself and then just share the lessons with your kids. I hope you really get a lot out of these books. I've put the links to them all in the description below. Plus, I have a webinar that I'm going to be putting on very soon showing you how you can start your own online business by using YouTube. It's going to be my YouTube Success Secrets Masterclass, and it's going to be for free. So go ahead and sign up for that, and I'm going to teach you all the tricks that I have learned over the years how to grow a YouTube channel to drive traffic to your online business. And I'm so excited to share that with you. All right, if you enjoyed this video, give me a like, share it with somebody who you think can really use that and check out the books below and leave me a comment. Which book are you going to read first? And if you've already read one of them, tell me what your biggest lesson was from each of those books. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, The Richest Man in Babylon, and think and grow rich. And then head on over here to learn even more how to start your own online business.